Oh yes, that's right. Welcome. And yeah, it's Friday. And it's gonna be good. Just uh yeah, battling in here. Sorry. Uh having a rough one. So I thought I would share some yeah, rather good news. Uh some of you probably already knew. Uh but still. Oh, let's see some feedback here. And yeah, I'm of course talking about the Craft Beer and Brewing magazine. I'm going to talk more about that. But first of all, welcome to Freisdag. And it's weekend. Mm, delightful having one of my own beers now um uh munich dunkel uh, but not a munich dunkel after all on uh norwegian malts of course uh 100 of bunsak's uh, munich malt and fermented with um utterstal kraken so that's really good and I really enjoy it. So, cheers, guys. Well, bitches on. Hold Welcome. So, let's dig into this good stuff. Because in the thumbnail, uh, you probably already saw the first magazine that we were going to look into. And... Yeah, Fire and Brew Stones. This is a really good one. I wanted to uh, try to implement it in my farmhouse, or sorry, in my modern brewery, these farmhouse techniques, but I really haven't got the time yet. So, gotta do that later, I guess. But let's start with this one. This one was the first, and yesterday, Oh, it's yesterday I got this one in the mail and it's beyond barley, barley wine and beyond. And we're going to open this later. So, but first I want to share this with you. This one is the first of brewer, um, of craft beer and brewing magazine that Lars Marius Garsel has right been writing for and i know he's been writing for beer magazines before but that's um the first one was for um bio uh, brew your own about raw ale but now i know he has his own uh, little column here about traditional farmhouse techniques and the first one fire and brew stones this is a really good one and it's a really difficult one for me that he started with because as i told you i really wanted to try it in my own brewery but i know brew stones are not your typical uh, brewing sessions so let's just dig into it i have not seen it yet i'm really looking forward to share it with you guys i've been um getting these in the mail for a long time uh, craft beer and brewing magazine that is and i have a uh, affiliate link in the description for you all so we can check it out and you can get your own in in your mail so i've been looking uh, looking forward to this and always when i open these my magazines i check out the recipes Let's see, because there is homebrew recipes all up in here. And uh, usually there are good ones. Let's see. Okay. Jester. Oh, Jester King. That's a really good one. Jester King, Le Petit Prince. That is a really great beer. And uh, oh, oh, this is, this is really good. I don't think you can see that, but let's see. Oh, you did. Oaken time. 
Eik and Tid. That's a Norwegian uh, raw sour beer um, brewery. And they got a recipe in here. That's almost the first Norwegian recipe I've seen in this. Oh, here he is. The man himself. Lars Marius. And yeah, that's why I'm really excited because I've been looking forward to talking more about farmhouse brewing. Okay, so Lars Morris is an author, a researcher on traditional farmhouse brewing for blah, 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 blah. He's the author of Historical Brewing Techniques. You, he is. That's a really good book. I hope all of you have it. But let's see. Let's just dig into it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Hops, not my. Let's see in here. Blue, 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 blue. Okay, that wasn't that easy. Let's flip through it. Of course, I'm going to read all about this later, but. Oh, American IPA. No, thank you. Oh, for those who are about to rock. Steinbeer. Steinbeer uh, in Norwegian are Steinerl. Um, we really... This is really something special. We, we did this in Norway as well, because all... Uh, brewing at some point has been done with rocks. I'm going to talk more about that. I don't know. Uh, Ölbisha asks if uh, we can find these beers, and I don't know. I know Jester King doesn't send um, not to Vinmonopole, the monopoly here in Norway about uh, of um, beer that's uh, above 4.7 um, ABV. But I have some friends that have sent me Jester King that eat Prince. So I have tasted that one. And <laughs> the most beautiful thing is that you can check out the homebrew recipes yourself. You can just brew them. They're all in there. But let, let's talk about the Stein beer because Stein beer is uh, a historical aspect of it is that uh, you heat up these uh, rocks and get them really, really, really hot. Because in the olden days, when you um, used only wooden uh, equipment, you couldn't uh, put fire directly to it. It would just burn. So they used hot rocks to hit the mass temperatures. So they would uh, use um, clamps or metal clamps or something to pick up these hot rocks and put it in the mash. And that's the way you got the temperature up. Somebody thinks that it boiled with it as well, but uh, as far as I know, that can't happen. So let's see. My setup here is a little toy, I can feel, but yeah, let's get into it. Here's something you won't read often in a beer magazine. You won't need any fancy equipment for this. And that's really true. Yeah, the Steinberg video Urbisha mentions. I gotta put a link below uh, to that. I know there's a woman uh, doing a Stone Beer um, brewing uh, sequence, and that's really something else. But yeah. Um, pa -pa -pum. He's talking about brewing it. This is Joe Strange. Oh, I want to see the one with Lars first. Oh, there's it. Okay, <laughs> so probably gonna start here. This is the article uh, Lars wrote. Um, Fire and Brew Stone, the real story of Steinbeer. Um, as we all know, Steinbeer is an old lager style from Franconia. I think that's um, Austria. Made using hot stones to boil the wort. Oh, 
listen, listen to this part again. Made using hot stones to boil the wort. The problem is that none of this is true. Second sentence. We can trace our misunderstanding back to Michael Jackson in the beer hunting, blah, 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 blah. So follow the stone's path. This is really crazy. There is still brewing stein bears. And think just think about that in your uh, in your farmhouse brewing mind that you put really hot stones directly from uh Gröd. Mm, don't remember what's it in English, but from uh your fire and putting it up in the malt. Gotta have some good caramel and burn taste to that. He's from Austria, yes, blah. As we all know, Stanberg said, oh, the problem is that that ain't true. It's really crazy. And this is why I really wanted to make one at home. I haven't. I just haven't got the time or the equipment yet. How they really made Steinberry. Let's let's start there. Ambers, Skamlov said, is um girl. Yeah. You know. Yeah, Ulvisha mentions that is that's another reader than that one I was talking about, so that's good. There's more out there. That's good. We know they brewed Steinbeer in some details, thanks to the audio tapes mentioned above. Blah. There's the brewery. <sighs> yeah. So imagine for a moment that you're going to brew somehow without using a kettle. As I mentioned, um, yeah, it would burn. That's right. Mashing. How do you do it? As we know from the traditional of raw ale brewing, boiling isn't necessary at all. Historically, in fact, boiling was not even common practice. Steinbeer brewing actually malted their own grains. So, Jürgen, I saw you were in there for a while. You brew, you malt your own malts. That's do a, and you do a raw ale. So let's do a Steinbeer. That's a beautiful mug. Ooh, my setup is tight. So, oh, here we go. Some uh, furthering still in there. And these kilns were very similar to the kilns that were used in farmhouse brewing scenes in Scandinavia, including the soin used in Sjordan, Norway. The rootlets were not rootlets were not removed from the dry malts. Another similarity with farmhouse brewing. That's pretty crazy. Rootless are, uh, yeah, th th that's that's hard to have any beer, I think. But what do I know? Uh, soaked in water. Then let's go back. It was the fur. It was time to mash the heated stones over a wooden fire for about two and a half hours in a structure called grumal. Then they removed the stones with a steel tongue and placed them in a wooden baskets, which were first soaked in water so they wouldn't caught fire. This is really crazy. So let's do a stein beer, everybody. So as I mentioned, beautiful pictures as well. Sorry about the light. There you go. They're heating up the rocks and just putting it all up in. The means of Stone Age. Crazy. More stone traditions. So they still do this in Austria. And that's pretty crazy, I think. That people still do this. And uh, I talked to Lars about it, and he told me that I also do it commercially. They do commercial stone bears. That's crazy. 
so Joe strange about how to make one. And here you got a little recipe going. Stone beer recipe. Whee! This uh, magazine also is 94 beers rated and reviewed. Farmhouse, Ale, Lambic, Abyss. So there's a lot of good stuff in it. Let's see the Aiken time. Aiken time. <laughs> Aiken did. Sorry. Mm, yeah. They're talking so much about their, um, their ways of uh, fermenting. The original quake coll collected by Aiken Teed from Horningdal and adopts as house culture. Um, Repitch include the lacto. That's crazy. So if you want to do this, you got to have the, the real or the farmhouse um, strain or culture. Cheers, guys. Really digging it. And yeah, it should be the next project. I haven't time to do it, though. Oh, burning the candles at least in three ends here. So, no, I should, I hope. This one is really good as well. This recipe, the aching time. Carasus. There is a royal, of course, fermented with uh, distinct with quake and later steeped with a lot of sour cherries. That's good. So, that's the first one. Uh, last uh, month's magazine. But now for a real goodie, because yeah, I can't make st stone beers now. Let's see. I don't know what we got in here, but let's dig into it. And that's yellow. Okay, so. Nothing this far says anything about farmhouse brewing. Beyond barley, bar the wine and beyond and the vice book. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see what we got here. I really like uh, barley wines though. Uh, me and some friends here in Norway are really digging it. So this will be a good magazine for me uh, still a good issue still if i'm not hitting it up with uh, the farmhouse scene i really hope there's some farmhouse in there lars is at least smiling uh in here so there he is um haven't mixed up the Things to say about him yet, so not that long. Let's see about the recipes. Ooh, wheat wine, and it's long winter. Annie Johnson, don't know her, but probably good. And tomato goose. <laughs> That's something to try. I have to read this. Uh, cream ale, dry Irish stout, Houston Hayes, coconut porter, Rogan Alt, Rogan beer, so draft gluten free strong ale, Weissen double book, Scott's ale, Anchorage, though. Anchorage, I know. Anchorage are a oh, deal with the devil. Ooh, that's a really good one, but that's. The one the one I tested, I guess. That's funny. In this magazine, you get something new every time. So something you didn't know you were looking for. Top hops now. That's funny. Um, little thing going there. Um, because here you see by the year which hop they grow the most of. And it's Citra. Mosaic is pretty good. El Dorado is down there, and you see Cascade for, for instance, really doing good in uh, 2014. 
No, it's a little less. That's funny. Because the thing that are really special about this magazine uh, is that it's craft beer and brewing. So it's it's uh, not only for the home brewer, uh, like BIO, brew your own, is totally for the home brewer and uh, with a DIY aspect. But this one is a little more for the industry and then have something that for me isn't that oh this one is something for scum loves tomato goose i really like the wheat one as well uh Urbisha, from um rusty pig and yeah i don't know what we could do oh really Look at that. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Estonia's own home beer. Let's see. In Tallinn, Estonia's capital, it's an odd mix of old wooden houses, Soviet era Stalin's big buildings, glooming modern glass and steel facade, all dominated by the medieval walled town. It's a really beautiful town. If you haven't been to Tallinn, you should go. And I guess we are going to get some beer reasons to go over there as well. The Kudoras brewers are home brewers, like all true farmhouse brewers. They live spread out in the little village across three islands. And I'm not going to butcher their names, but it's really good. In the olden days, any holiday must always start with smoking fish and brewing beer. Once these were ready, the holiday could start. Smoked fish in Kudolo. Kuduro. Uh, as always, sorry about butchering it. And yeah, tomato. Let's see how much I got. Little, little step back, just... Let's see, they use tomato puree and tomato ketchup. <laughs> Powered black peppers, chili peppers, and garlic powder. And yeah, it's a kind of sour bear, it's a goose. Oh, goose, like the German one. Uh, yeah. It has little carbonation, the as farmhouse ales do, like every other farmhouse ale. Sorry about that. Uh, it tends to be Swedish, full sweet-ish. It's not Swedish, but sweet-ish. Full-bodied and juicy, with a fairly ma full mouth feel, finishing with fairly bitter juniper notes. We, oui. I didn't know that I had um, junipers that far. South. It's not that far south, but still. Still. Let's see. This one I could do, though. Let's see how, what they are saying about... This is fireplace with a smoke channel be beneath the floor. And the malt is gently heated. They make their own malts as well, of course. He speaks non English. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna do a ketchup curl. <laughs> Bloody Mary goose. Yeah. You people are picking up on the wrong things here. Farmhouse bring stuff. Okay, let's do a tomato ale there. Barley tomato ale. They buy noble hops. Traditional lives, despite the ranges of. Com okay, let's not talk politics here. There's a large number of farmhouse brewers plus a, plus a few brew pubs in addition to the two Pilata commercial brewers. It's not Pinata, but I couldn't say it. So sorry about that. Yet again. This 
this one is really good. This I I, I really like this because um, the Steinbeer I knew about it, you know, I knew the history and I knew some of it. This one is uh, new to me. That's really good about this magazine that you just can go into the magazine and pick up something new. And yeah, I have also the low carbonated uh, farmhouse ales though, but it can't be a farmhouse ale from me. Farmhouse ale style, it can be. So I tried to do it low carb or a middle carb. I wouldn't be surprised if it's because he makes his own malt. Okay, let's see this. The beer is amazingly drinkable. Light, fluffy mouthfeel. It's a royal, isn't it? Uh, Sweet-ish, not Swedish as before, but balanced by a light, the light, the light acidity, dusty hay and straw notes, followed by earthy peas and fruity gooseberry yeast characters. What kind of yeast? The Estonians have their own, don't they? Okay, so we got to read this more. <laughs> as always. Uh, as always, I'm a little light reader. Uh, one thing that shows up in the old documents is that the stone brewing was surprisingly common in Estonia. Back to the stones. Um, it was related to the Austrian stein beer in that the fire heated stones were used in the mash, but the Estonians had an extra trick. Ooh, the stone trick. That's that's good for all of us doing our stone beer projects going. Some brewers sprinkled rye flour on the hot stones before dropping them into the mash for an extra color and flavor oh that's i haven't i have seen this in videos the fl fl flower catches fire instantly the flames leaping out of the stones briefly then dying down hmm, little party trick going there and i think it's uh, really tasty as well that's cool the main way to brew on the main island, however, was using a great Russian oven. And the oven is, is pretty crazy. Um, I heard stories about people uh, doing saunas in there. You can fit a whole person in there. It's like um, the oven was uh, in the middle of the house. It was like, yeah, you know, if you're going to live in Sibir, you're going to have a Russian oven. oven. Much like the Lithu Lithuanian Kapitinis brewers do. The reason is that Icelander is <laughs> Islanders don't do the that seems to be great oven never made it to the island. That's not weird at all because they're heavy as fuck. Okay, so traditional lives. That was the politics part. While well, could it, Kudolo may be difficult to buy commercially. You can certainly find worse destination for a beer tourism. You, hey, Rusty. This uh, magazine is all up in your alley. Beyond barley, barley wine, and beyond. Mm. Che cheers, Helge. I'm gonna do um, more brews, I hope. I mean, this one with me today. Open bottles. Okay, no gushing, please. Woo! Going all up in there. <laughs> okay, so my setup has to evolve for next time. So, yeah, this is your Friday night. You're looking at a fairly bad reader read beer magazines yeah that's really what you are doing today cheers and yeah it's 
It's really your magazine, your kind of magazine. Oops. Sorry about that. So let's see. Spindle tap. Let's see the and uh, as the another um, magazine before. Whew. So much good in here, but hard names though. <laughs> I agree, it's funny. Fusel has uh, already been drinking beers for a while, so he thinks it's 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 really good. Make your best cream ale. No, thank you. Try Russian uh, Irish stout. Okay, so it's the point I was trying to make before I just lost it. Um, style school in the first magazine. Back to the tomato beer. Um, in the first magazine, they told us how to brew it. They haven't done it yet here, but they have to do it, don't they? And yeah, haven't uh, if you haven't heard, there is a podcast from a craft beer and brewing magazine at all. Uh, as well. And Lars Marius has an episode out there. It's really good. Of course, as it is. Food... Yellow. Uh, that's pretty wheat wine-ish, isn't it? That's more the um, new fancy one. In this two-part feature package, we first explore the brewing space be beyond Barley. Then turn <laughs> our sight to Barley wine and extended its family. Okay, skipping the first part then. Rugen malt going gluten free. Okay. Heimdall's draft. So typical of he's from Ohio, Ohio wants to take Heimdall. Uh, Weissenbock. Weissen double book. Lost stock and barrel. The forgotten funk of old ale. Yeah, I also think thought about you, Rusty, when I when I saw this the first time, because this is an article I saw it on the front page. Uh, <laughs> stocked ales with Brett. Oh, that's Brett Nemesis for you. Uh, to wheat wine and double barreled aged barley wine, pushing pushing the limits of brewing with these biggest beers. That's funny. Yeah, I can do the Baltic Porter. I think the Baltic Porter is pretty good. But now it's more... It was once uh, indisputable. Okay, I really won't try to read that one again. To their refined characters. But Bretnomyces is rarely involved with oak-aged barley wines these days. And that's not all they've lost since the 1800s. So yeah, this is a really good bit, uh, picture for you all because uh, if you haven't tried, um, I really don't know what it's called in English. Blue cheese, it's called in Norwegian. Mugost, Blåost, uh, with barley wines and all dales. You should. Uh, Rusty can answer us as well. Come on. Everybody can go at it. Uh, Scott Sale. Okay. I really want to see more farmers brewing up in there. <sighs> but this one is good, though. The Anchorage. A deal with the devil. Anchorage uh, brewing uh, out of Ag Anchorage, Alaska. Um, really has done something special. They have uh, a lot of limited uh, edition beers that are um, award-winning. So here are the experts pick. Uh, Fonteflora, birthday wine, Charlie Little Coat. We know this, don't we? Dom Tom Tom. Third place. You don't need to travel to Norway for amazing bar the wine. But there are a wash as 
er vers i nytt. <laughs> Cold favorite Larvik, Lærvik. At least they're um, gentle. And I won't even try to say that word. Foray into port and current. Showing the exact axis, sorry, is nothing without balance. Yeah. A people's favorite, I guess. Um, <laughs> funny story. Um, last time I drank this, um, our good friend, the Rusty Pig, got my little drink. And <laughs> giving me this one at two in the morning from Cali to Bristol. Let's see the farmers. Ooh, wheat wine be mine. There's another favorite. Fikin or Dudler. And honey and wheat wine. Here we got Anis all winter white. No, sorry, wheat wine long. It's an extract. Crazy. And as in um, the first issue we read, there's also a lot of uh, tasting notes here. As I said, uh, this magazine is also for um, <laughs> uh, commercial um, pubs and uh, everything else. So it's not only farmers. Uh, no, sorry, it's not uh, home brewer related, but doesn't matter. Where was that recipe? Brit, barley wine, hazy IPA, cream ale, Irish stout, wheat wine, scotch ale, peanut, sorry, coconut, porter, and more. I wanted... Okay, so it was less farmhousey than the first issue this year. For those who are about to rock, of course. Uh, because in the first issue... We had um, a recipe of the farmhouse beer. This is a less this is less a recipe and more of a set guidelines and guesses, partly inspired by can't even try to say it. Uh, stone beer in Latvia. Lithuanian uh, stone beer it is, as described by Simona's. Sorry, not butchering your name. It's hard to say what kind of efficiency it will get. Of course. Um, yeah. And the uh, last is, and good luck. Thank you. Uh, brew house efficiency, they said in this recipe, is 72%. That's crazy. Not going to happen with hot rocks. Sorry about that. Uh, whole leaf sauce boiled in water to make hop tea. They did that in Farmer's Spring. Uh, they do it still some places, but yeah, that's not. Let's do it royal. Skull. Whoo! This one is good. Can be one of mine though. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's right, Netan. Your girlfriend is from Latvia. Uh, Lithuanian. Yeah, there's a good farmhouse brewing there. And the best uh, Baltic porter. Let's let's go into the Baltic porter. Uh, the best Baltic porter I have. Uh, <laughs> Fun enough because. Um, I date Rod and uh, Finnmark Slöpe just finished, and last time I, I was uh, attending or I was a handler, so I, I didn't race, but I uh, was in on uh, Finnmark Slöpe in 18 2018. Ringnes here in Norway uh, does every year a um, series of um, limited edition, limited editions of a christmas ale and that year it was a baltic porter and it was really good ringness uh, does uh, often make 
for uh, internationals just clear um don't want to step on some toes here but still uh, uh industrialized uh, pilsner so in mass production so this was a small batch and yeah it was really good so i really opened my eyes to baltic porters and from that point on uh, that was really first baltic porter i really loved so uh, i really don't know what the series called but you gotta check that out uh Linus is not the type that shares recipes so you have to just wing it i guess and i really want to make this one but let's see so which malt to use for those about rock rebuild ready to build a fire and brew a traditional stone beer at home oh yeah grab your tongues and get ready to rock oh you americans how to looter louder it sounds pretty cool to throw some hot rocks into the mash but then what how do you separate the precious sugar liquid from the pile of warm rocks and sizzled, sizzled grains? And as I said before, you gotta check out the video in the description and she will tell you how. So yeah, that's the two first magazines for you all. Uh, really stoked about this one, the first one about Stein beer. Uh, Stein beer. Uh, I hoped it would be something I can do at home, but it gotta be a bigger project, a little more uh, down to earth. The la later magazine, the last one that I got yesterday. But as always, you can check it out yourself. Uh, as I told you before, uh, affiliate link down below. And I get a little kickback, so that's good for me anyways. And you get a little, not a refund, but an offer. So yeah. Do any of you guys have a beer magazines coming in your mail? You should. Um... Then you can read about barley wines, about Pretnomyces, double barrels, pushing the limits. And yeah, there's beer. Mosher though, Randy Mosher, real good. Breaking down Belgian bio flavor, flavor anyways. Oh, sorry. So yeah, you guys got a... Um, yeah, I gotta link up the 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 one Urbisha also mentions. Ooh, you did scum this? That's crazy. Nurbrig knows. So yeah, gonna gonna grab some more beer, I guess, and sit down and start to edit. I have a video coming out on uh, Northern Root here on uh, Sunday. Yet another part of my interview with uh, the guys from Big Land Brigri. Uh, we're gonna talk a little more about the brewing situation they're in, or there was at that point, and how they think in the future. And of course, as Norwegian, we already know that the future is here. Probably another people from uh, another parts of the world also, but not uh, <laughs> just about Big Lon. All the future is here. So yeah, see you back on Sunday, I hope. And thanks for following me. I've been a lot of, a lot of Norwegian this time, um, but I know that I am fucking up the... Sorry, I'm uh, up the... Not the timeline, but uh, the time. Sorry, out of English words. Yeah, you know what I mean. 
Uh, you know what I mean. You're eight hours before me, and I'm behind you. And okay, okay, okay. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> Giving up. Thanks you for the following, guys. You're the best. See you in yeah three, four, six, eight months. Hope for before, but I have a lot of projects going, and really going uh, full ham on the Norwegian channel now. But yeah, let's see how it is. Time zone. Thank you. Scamless knows. Yeah, the time zone I'm, of course, talking about. So, yeah. Uh, great having you guys. And cheers. And skull. That's better. Gonna drink it all up. Put it in the coconut. <laughs>